Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number nine from the October 2023 Pure Mathematics P1 International A Level paper from Edexcel. This question here is about radian measure. And here we're told about the plan view of an area being used for a ball throwing competition. So someone's throwing a ball from out here, I guess. Competitors, competitors must stand within the circle C and throw a ball as far as possible into the target area shown shaded in figure three. So we're told that the circle C has a center O, P and S are points on the circle C. O, P, Q, R, S, O is a sector of the circle with center O. So this, this whole thing here is a sector of a circle with center O. The length of arc PS is 0 0.2 meters and the size of angle POS is 0 0.6 radians. Show that OP equals 1.2. So I'm going to put those values on here so I don't have to scroll up and down. So I've just made a little copy of the diagram down here. Um, so this angle here is 0 0.6 radians. Let me make this a bit bigger. Okay, I don't have to even consider um, most of this diagram for the first part, actually. So what I might do is just, I might do this to make it a bit easier. I'll just take this bit. I'll get rid of this and I'll just use this. That'll make um, things a bit clearer. All right. So here we're told that the length of the arc PS is 0 0.272 meters. So that means the length of this arc from there to there. So this is the length of the arc is 0 0.72 meters. We're told that the angle um, theta is 0 0.6 radians. The angle here is 0 0.6 radians. We want to show that OP is 1.2 meters. So OP is the radius. So OP, O to P is the radius. And we know that the length of an arc of a um, circle when the angle is measured in radians is given by the formula R times theta, where R is the radius and theta is the angle in radians, which is what we have here. So this is going to be given, therefore, um, we can say the length of the arc, which we know is 0 0.72, is equal to r which we have to find times theta which is 0 0.6 so therefore we can say r is equal to 0 0.72 divided by 0 0.6 which is like 72 over 6 which is um which is like sorry which is like 72 over 60 which is going to be 1.2 meters okay we can confirm that 0 0.72 whoops 0 0.72 divided by 0 0.6 that's going to be 6 over 5 which is 1.2 meters so that is the value of r 1.2 meters okay so there's a now we're going to go on to part b so it says here given also that the target area pqrs which is basically the area of the sector without this part inside the circle the area of this big sector without the part in the circle is 90 meters squared and the length PQ is X. So they're telling us that the length from P to Q, which is from here to here, that length is X. And we know that O to P, we, we just worked out O to P, or we were told and we worked it out and showed that it was 1.2 meters. So this is 1.2 here. And we know that the angle was, to go back here and find it, was a 0 0.6, 0 0.6. So that angle was 0 0.6, okay, um, radians. So we can now show that, the, so basically we know the area of the shaded part, okay, the, the area which is shaded is going to be equal to the area of the whole sector. You can say the area of the large sector minus the area of the small sector okay so the area of the large sector minus the area of the small sector now the large sector okay has the large sector has an has a radius of x plus 1.2 and an angle is 0 0.6 radians the small sector has a radius of 1.2 and an angle of 0 0.6 so the area of a sector is given by a half r squared theta okay that's the general formula so we're going to have 
um, a half times the large sector area, which I'm going to call big R squared theta, minus a half times the small radius, which is small, I'm going to call it small R squared times theta. It makes it easier for me to write it like this because then I can take out a half theta and I'm left with big R squared minus little R squared inside. So now I can put the value in as theta is 0 0.6. So you have a half times 0 0.6 times. And then you've got big R squared, which is x plus 1.2 squared minus little r squared, which is 1.2 squared. Okay, and we know that this is the area, the shaded area. Shaded area, shaded area, shaded area, which we know is equal to what? 90 meters squared. So we know that the shaded area is equal to 90 meters squared, so I can make an equation now. So a half times 0 0.6 is 0 0.3 times and this is going to give me x squared plus you multiply these together 1.2 x double it 2.4 x you square the last term uh, 1.2 times 1.2 is that 1.44 yep 1.44 minus it's going to oops plus 1.44 minus uh, 1.44 okay is equal to 90. all right so we have here um these will cancel out so we've got we've got 0 0.3 x squared plus um that's going to be 0 0.8 x x is that right 0 0.3 times 2.4 let's just in case i made a silly mistake uh, 0 0.3 times 0 2.4 0 0.3 times 2.4 gives you 0 0.72 what did i do there yeah, sorry. That's a good thing I checked there. Yeah, silly me. I did something silly there. I think I was dividing instead of multiplying, right? Yeah, I was dividing instead of multiplying. Silly. So you you got to multiply. That's going to be uh, what did we say it was going to be? Zero point seven two. Good thing I checked. Zero point seven two x equals ninety. Okay. So now we got zero point three x squared plus zero point seven two x minus ninety equals zero. Of course. That's not going to look the same as what we have to show. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, we have to make it look like this in the end. So let's say we multiply or say let's divide by 0 0.3 and see what happens. When we divide by 0 0.3, this becomes x squared plus 0 0.72 divided by 0 0.3 is going to give us I should, you know, what I should have done. I should have divided. No problem. I can just do it now. So 0 0.72, 0 0.72 divided by 0 0.3. That gives us uh, 12. Over, I'll, I'll write it as a fraction better. 12 over 5x minus 90 divided by 0 0.3. That gives us 300 equals zero. So if you multiply everything by five, we get five x squared plus 12 x minus 1500 equals zero, which is what we had to show. Good, it worked out in the end. Okay, so that equation is what we got by basically finding the area of the whole big sector, taking away the part that's unshaded, and that left us with the shaded part. Okay, so I just rearranged this first to make it, you know, the big R basically is the big radius, all right, which we said was x plus 1.2. And the small R was 1.2. And theta was our angle, which was 0 0.6 radians. And then we managed to show that this equation is true. Okay, so there's part A or B done. Now we got to do part C. And it says here, hence calculate the total perimeter of the target area. PQRS giving your answer to the nearest meter. So we know this already, this was one point. Let me make sure. Um, over here we worked it out. PS, they're told it was what, 0 0.72. Okay, 0 0.72. Okay, so this, this was 0 0.72, so we know that. Okay, um, I know that this is X. Okay, which we can find when we solve this equation. And this is also x. And we need to find the, the length of this big arc. 
Okay, so in order to find the length of the big arc and to find these two x's, we've got to solve this equation. Then we've got 0 0.72 plus 2x plus the length of the arc, and that will give us the length of the big arc. That will give us our perimeter, which we then round in the end to the nearest meter. So first step is to, to solve this equation. Now, the brave one would be the one that tries to factorize this. I think it's probably, maybe it's possible, but I think the safest thing to here to do is to use the quadratic formula. What you should not do is to just use a calculator and write down x equals and x equals. You will definitely lose method marks for that. You must show that either you factorized, if it can be factorized, or use a quadratic formula. Even if it can be factorized, if you use a quadratic formula, it's fine unless they tell you to factorize it. Um, or use completing the square. In fact, you know what I'll do? No, completing the square will be a bit complicated because of this. So I'm just going to use a quadratic formula. That will make life easy. So x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. There's no prizes or no marks for just writing down the quadratic formula. That doesn't give you any marks. All right. But what does give you the method marks is putting the right numbers in the right places. So we can say x equals, if you put minus 12 plus or minus the square root of 12 squared minus 4 times 5 times minus 1500. Remember, this is this is A, this is B, this is C. All right, all over 2 times 5. If you write that down, you're going to get your method marks. And then if you just write down the values of x after that, there's no problem. So if we just put this in a calculator, minus 12, minus 12, plus the square root of 12 squared, minus 4 times 5 times minus 1500 divided by 2 times 5. That gives us an answer that's not exact. So I'm going to write this to at least three decimal places. So x equals 16.162. x equals 16.162. Now the other solution is going to be a negative solution, which doesn't make sense. So if I, if I change this here for a minus sign, it's going to give us another answer, which is negative. Okay, which is going to give us minus 18.562, minus 18.562. We can't, we can't accept x as a negative value. x is positive, therefore x is 16.162. All right, so now we know which value to use for x. We can now find the perimeter. So the perimeter is the length of the small arc plus the length of the big arc plus 2 times x. Okay, this is x, this is x. So the length of the small arc we know is 0 0.72. The length of the small arc is 0 0.72. The length of the big arc is given by, so let me just write it. You have 0 0.72 plus the length of the big arc, which is r times theta. Now r is equal to what? Big r is equal to x plus 1.2. So make sure x plus 1.2. That was the radius that we found. So it's going to be um, r is equal to 1, 16.2. Sorry, 16.162 plus 1.2. So we're going to have, that's going to be 17.362. 17.362. Continue on. So we're going to have, um, that's small l plus big L, which is, um, okay, which is 17.362 times theta. Theta was what? The angle was 0 0.6. That's right. Okay, that's 0 0.6. L, big L is going to be R theta, as we said, which is going to be this. Okay, remember theta is theta is 0 0.6. All right, so that's that's basically the small the small arc plus the big arc. Then we got plus two times what we found x to be two times 16.162. All of that together is going to give us our perimeter. Okay, so let's try to put it in the calculator in such a way that we end up with um, the exact answers. Okay, so, yeah, so this is um, the exact answer that we got for this. So what I'm gonna do is, so this is the answer in my calculator now. This is the answer in my calculator. So I'm going to do 0 0.72 plus, and I've got my answer 
Okay, and we added what to it? 1.2 plus 1.2. Okay, that's going to give us this value here. And we're going to multiply that by 0 0.6. So we got to this part here. We've done this and this now. 0 0.6. I don't know what happens there. 0 0.6. That's better. And then we got to add to that two times the answer. Okay, two times. I'll put it as times in case. The answer that we got last, which is still that 16.162. So this should give us the answer. So we have 0 0.72 plus... The answer, which was this plus um, the the um, the small radius, because you want to find the length of the big arc. So it's going to be this. This is x, and this is our. So this is x, and this is the um, 1.2 x plus 1.2, which is that part there. Okay, times 0 0.6. That's r theta. That's the length of the big arc, plus two times these these two lengths as well, which is not the whole radius, just the x part. That should give us an answer, which is 43.461, 43.461, 43 43.461, which we have to round to the nearest meter. So we normally would say 43.5, but because they want the nearest meter, it's going to be 43 meters. Okay, that's to the nearest meter. Okay, normally you would do 3SF. Here we have to do according to the question. It says to the nearest meter. So we give the answer to the nearest meter. And that concludes this question, question number nine from the October 2023 paper, Pure, One, Pure Mathematics 1. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here. Other questions from the topic of radian measure from P1 of Edexcel in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link. And this video will take you to a, or this link will take you to a video which tells you how to use my channel effectively. Thank you for watching and see you soon.